question. Yeah. You guys are familiar, but who's using it? Ah, uh, there uh, we go. There we go. So you probably know P uh, PHP unit. PHP unit is also more actively maintain it and it's easy to integrate with uh, continuous integration uh, tools and it's also the de facto standard for PHP, for PHP. So we gained a lot by only migrating to PHP unit. It was hard, uh, it was tedious sometimes, but, but it allowed us to create bare tests for our framework. Uh, it can be installed either by dropping it into K the KPHP vendors folder or using pair, if you're f familiar with the package manager. And we found out that it's also a lot faster. Uh, also more Speed specs, how fast? Uh, how fast? For instance, just talking about one test in the framework that usually took uh, like five, min five minutes to complete. It now takes 30 seconds, that much faster. That was on your computer. Of course, I, right. I, I'm just comparing my computer to my computer. That's the only benchmark that makes sense. I won't compare my computer to a... So your computer specs, I think it's a... It's a... Core Mac 2 Duo? 20 cores. Uh, no. <laughs> it's a MacBook from 2008, Core 2 Duo. That's it. A, a fairly simple, common computer. And unit, it provides us some more tools. You can read about them. Um, PHP unit, uh, sorry. Um, PHP unit .de. Um, too bad. <laughs> this is not my presentation, so I don't know how much time I have to click here. Um, stop. stop. Yeah. You can write that URL if you, if you like to read the PHP unit documentation. I encourage you to use it. Sure. No, it's in English, but <laughs> the creator is German, Sebastian Bergman. Uh, but at, w at what cost we change the, this framework? Practically not much. Even though we have regretted all our test suites from the ground up, we have provided a clear migration path and lots of compatibility tools to migrate your own unit test to the new framework. Uh, and it also has some, the, the biggest change we, we found out that can be easily translated from simple test to PHP units are the mockups, or mocks, sorry, the mock objects. Uh, they are extremely different, but they are, they are extremely awesome. They, you can do a lot of things that they were, weren't possible using simple test. Uh, we have deprecated some callbacks inside the test that didn't make sense. And some assertions got a bit different, like assert type is, is not called assert type anymore. You have to assert internal type, for instance. But we have written some wrappers around the, the default assertions inside PHP units to mock the old behavior from simple tests. For instance, uh, simple test uses assert, assert equal, and PHP unit uses assert equals. But we have written a wrapper around assert equals, so you can use either of, of both. Uh, we, ha we have also dropped the support for group testing, but uh, it is fairly simple to create a group test using PHP unit. Just create your own test suite and add the test files to it. Uh, this one's just about how we've refactored the core a bit. We've gone and had a look at how we're using things and how things are constructed and organized and gone through and rearranged that so it makes a bit more sense, so it's easier to understand even without the documentation. So things like behaviors, components, helpers, shells, a lot of the objects that we have that are in collections uh, have been reorgani reorganized. A uh, good example is we previously used to have components extending this object class uh, where we have controllers extend app controller and app controller extends controller. That kind of makes sense. A component extending an object didn't really make sense. So 
we look at it and we had a component of class. We've changed it to be a component collection, brought in a component class to make that class hierarchy make sense. So looking at it rather than just, like I said earlier, the PHP 5 only support and really going in and refactoring things to make them structured a little bit more intelligently. Um, so it makes more sense, it's intuitive, and you need less time to search the documentation because it, it makes sense to read. Uh, everyone know what SPL is? Okay. <laughs> no, well, yes, but not in this context. What? what? <laughs> Sound pressure level. <laughs> uh, so SPL is a standard PHP library. It provides a lot of classes and, and functions that, um, that are handy. So it's, it's handy for a whole range of things, and it means that we don't need to re-implement some stuff in the core. Um, KPHP 1, in the sense that it was supported in PHP 4, uh, it was ahead of its time. It provided a lot of functionality that wasn't included in PHP for a long time. Um, the best example I draw on, because a lot of people use it, is JSON encoding and decoding. It was not always there, right? So uh, it's five point something that it's sort of come along, 5.1 something, I think. Um, so PHP is caught up, I say. It's provided this functionality by default. So we can pull that out of the KPHP core, which makes the core faster and um, you know, benefits everyone overall. Um, so there's some non-SPL stuff in there as well, uh, like the JSON encoding, and we can rely on that shipping with PHP and not have to re-implement. Uh, for reference, I guess, as it is at the moment, because we support PHP 4, we have our own JSON encoding and decoding stuff written in PHP in the Cake PHP core. So it'll use that if it doesn't find the JSON encode and decode functions defined. So there's that fallback that we provide. You can talk about this. I can talk about this. Um, we're now using exceptions extensively through the core to indicate error, error conditions. Uh, it means that overall things are easier to control, to recover from, uh, and to deal with. It's more, more object oriented, and we're, uh, we're removing this cake error method that we had previously. Uh, so uh, yeah, it just makes it easier to control where you go and what you do once an error occurs. Uh, again, stealing Jose's example is that in the case where you would render an image uh, as a result, perhaps an error occurs um, during that processing, you could have an uh, error handler catch an exception and hand off a default image to say that there was an error processing the image or some sort of placeholder. Uh, so like I say, create custom handlers for each exception, uh, control what happens. And an example is the media view. So if file not found, you can handle that intelligently and return a default. Me or you? Uh, request and response objects are new to KPHP 2. Previously, we had requests information sort of distributed around the place. We had it in the controller. We had it in request handler. Um, and there was a few places where you could get the information you needed. So it replaces some functionality uh, through the controller dispatcher request handler and implements array access for backwards compatibility for those coming from 1.3, 1.2. Uh, it's generally there for protection. So it, <laughs> it provides a, a better mechanism for reading in the request and a more uh, flexible way to provide um, customization for the output for the response. So you can access this response object all over the place and uh, customize that response as you like. Uh, my pretty pictures are coming up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so sessions. Uh, we talked about session configurability just before, uh, and that was on 1.3. Similar in uh, 2.0, but we've changed things again to restructure and, and organize. Uh, we've done some changes in 1.3 to sort of prepare for that, and that is that sessions shouldn't always be included. Sometimes you don't want sessions. There are certain things you do where you don't need it. So that's fixed in 1.3. We're trying to organize data into a model style. Since we represent all data in models, it makes sense to have session information in a model as well. Um, and you can now ac access sessions anywhere in, an, uh, I guess, an easier way. Um, it allows you to customize simply and extend and handle sessions any way you like. Uh, Previously in the core, we had this checking for what type of engine you wanted to use. This is just a, I guess, a cut down version of what's in the core. And it would read a configuration file if you were defining your own type. 
And so that's fine, and, and that work, worked quite well. It still does. But we've changed that to be a little bit uh, more object-oriented. So we have this session handler. We provide a couple of defaults for you to use, database, um, cache, PHP, these options for session handling. But in the case you want to handle them in a different way, you can define your own crazy engine that implements the session handler interface. So all you need to do is implement that interface, and sessions can be handled any way you like. So how do you, how do, you do that? So you create like the session handler class that implements the interface, mm -hmm. but how do you instantiate it? Uh, that's handled by the core for you. So you would specify the session handler in the um, in the, in the core config, in, configuration. in the configuration file, uh, and it would handle the instantiation and and so forth for you. So for anyone that's used KPHP and seen the changes we've done in 1.3 back from 1.2, uh, it looks similar to the way we restructured the JavaScript stuff. So we restructured that to pro provide some common engines for JavaScript generation, and in the case you wanted to, you could implement your own super engine, in this case extending a base engine helper. So it's similar functionality, and structuring things similarly makes it easier to understand as you move through different parts of the framework. Uh, another change that we did on, on KPHP 2.0 regarding performance was lazy loading. Who, who's familiar with this technique? OK. Uh, lazy loading is a simple technique that states that you will only load those components or classes or files that you need at the same time you need them. <coughs> so in the past, on KPHP 1.3, we practically loaded all the models on your application. If you had hundreds of models, this could get nasty because uh, performance-wise, you would spend lots of milliseconds looking up the files, parsing them, instantiating the models, etc. So for KPHP 2.0, for all, all objects that, had, that has nested objects inside, like models, components, helpers, tasks, and fixtures, those nested objects will get instantiated only if you need them. For instance, uh, on KPHP 1.3, if you instantiate one model, for instance, the URL model, after instantiating the user controller, it will look into the database to see if the user's table is there, but not anymore. Only if you query or you intend to query the database for URLs, it will actually look into the database. So you could have requests that won't even connect to the database or instantiate new objects that you don't need. We have bench benchmarked this feature, and we have seen more than 40% on performing gains uh, comparing to 1.3 on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> And that was a very cheap optimization, because for such a simple change, we gained a lot. Uh, quick question right on the way. Do you like use some sort of auto loading mechanism there, or like is it? We will get into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. XML is all yours. OK. Uh, as much as anyone can make sense of XML, we're trying <laughs> to do it. Um, CakePHP's 1.x XML stuff was very CakePHP specific um, in the sense that some features weren't supported and it was really sort of designed in and around CakePHP's model results and such. So it wasn't handy for integrating with external services that had complex XML. Uh, it didn't handle namespace as well. Uh, it could be done, but it wasn't very nice. And it didn't allow for things like ordered nodes, which come along with um, people that like to call themselves enterprise, will love ordered nodes. Uh, so now it's built on top of simple XML. It's all handled for us, and uh, it comes along with the SPL stuff in PHP 5. So very, very handy. It's faster, it, and it's generic, and people are familiar with it. Uh, the console. So the console you saw when we were doing cake PHP bake, uh, cake bake and uh, cake migrations, that sort of stuff, uh, the console was initially designed um, for code generation which we were doing. So code generation was the motivation for building that out. And it's since grown beyond there. And a lot of people have built their own plugins, their own shells to do different things. Uh, there's the migrations one you saw for database migrations. 
I have one that generates uh, sim links for assets and things to speed up requests. There's another one for deploying so you can clear out temporary directories. And there's a lot of tools out there. The API generator for, for api.kphp.org is a shell that goes through the files themselves, generates the, the output, and uh, generates our API site for us. Uh, so we've provided some niceties like colorized console uh, text. I'm heaps happy about that one. I can see my tests in green and red now. Um, so we support output verbosity, so it's a nicer way to uh, support more uh, verbose output. We've changed and restructured, I guess, the directories in which they're stored. They were previously in this vendors directory, uh, which is generally used for external classes and libraries. So it's now got its own directory called console, um, so giving it a home in the framework. Uh, and do, in doing this, it makes it easier to configure where your consoles are going. Uh, you can change the path and, and put them somewhere else. Do you want this one or do you want this one? Let's okay. keep this one. Um, so views have been changed a little bit. Our callbacks have been changed in terms of the order they're called. And we've made some changes to help these people that are building plugins and trying to control output uh, in a more flexible way. So we previously rendered it in a particular order, scripts, content, uh, our before callbacks, uh, and then we would render. And there would be after calls after that, of course. Uh, and we changed that around a bit, and it means that we have more flexibility over the content that's generated and what's happening in those renders. Uh, those of you that have used KPHP, have you used the email component? They've got some nods. Have you used it from a console? <laughs> yeah. So we've you been know, to the same therapist. Yeah. Right, yeah. We, <laughs> we've been to the same therapist, he says. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't nice. It's very possible. And once you've done it a couple of times, you can kind of streamline it down to a couple of lines. But you're building you know, your own controller and then assigning the component to it. And it just oh, it makes me shiver every time I have to do it. Um, but so we were restricted to a controller, essentially, or a terrible hack. So now it's a core library. And this is a branch that's in development at the moment. So uh, to be finished very soon. Um, you can use it anywhere. So it's just a core library. Uh, there are going to be niceties for like a component if you want. Uh, I believe a behavior that might still be under debate, but you'll be able to use that anywhere you like. Um, it's much simpler to use. Uh, so, new features. PDO, that's your one. Um, you who's familiar with PDO? Okay, PDO or PHP database object. Uh, it's just an abstraction layer over your databases. So if you need to connect to, for instance, MySQL or Postgres or SQLite, it will get the same API for connecting and retrieving data from, from each database. Uh, we finally switched to over using PDO. We restructure and practically regrowed re all our internal drivers for databases. And it turn out, turn out very well because we removed a lot of code. I'm happy when I remove code more than I write. Uh, and we homogenized all drivers inside KPHP. So it's fairly easy to migrate from MySQL to Postgres or develop using SQLite in your local machine and then deploy using MySQL. Uh, you, ha you don't have to worry about this. KPHP will take care for, for you. Uh, and it's also easy to write tests uh, migrating from, from one driver to the other. You can, you can write your tests using MySQL and quickly change over Postgres, and they will keep working. Unless, of course, you use custom Postgres function or something like that. But that's something we don't use inside the framework. If I can interrupt you, this is about PGO like, in comparison to other like, database abstraction layers. Is uh, very lightweight, so it's like it's very fast you know, compared to others. Yeah, of, of course, because it's, it's written in C, it's, it will be faster than anything you, you write on, on PHP. Uh, it also allows you to have prepared queries that was not possible before using KPHP 1.3. Do you know prepared queries? Yep, okay. Um, I'll skip this one. 
Oh, need yeah, we, we should talk about that. Um, so one of the things we have changed is added support for nested arrays in our named parameters. Uh, what this means is that your request can contain more information than it previously could. Uh, previously, you could only have one level. Now we're allowing you to nest in and add more information. Uh, the motivation behind this is to support things like multiple pagination on a single page. Uh, so you can do almost anything with it, but there are good examples where you can do too much with it, um, where the URLs generated can get pretty big, but you, know, you can see the flexibility, flexibility that you can offer um, is much greater than a single, single level in an array. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, we have showed how to use the auth component. Uh, practically, it only uses databases for authenticating your users. And it has some grabbers around ACL and other authentication authorization techniques. Uh, we have completely refactored it. And one of the biggest changes uh, that you have to, to take care about on your application is that it no longer has just passwords. Uh, I think that some of you ask a question that uh, how it manages the hashing the password, how do it knows, does it know? Uh, well, it doesn't do it anymore. You have to do it in your functions. This also has some flexibility advantages. Uh, this will only happen on, on the actions that are not the login function. So it will keep hashing your password on login functions, but it won't on functions like add, index, or edit. Uh, we, ha we also provide some authentication handlers and some custom authentication objects. You, ha you will have to manually log in your user. Previously, you, will have only to, you, you had to only write an empty login function. Not anymore. You at least have to call auth login. And we have some handlers like basic authentication, digest authentication, and stateless authentication. Like, for instance, OAuth uses stateless authentication. You just pass the authentication tokens. Yeah, in, simple, in every request. Uh, full details are on this page on the Lighthouse. Uh, another cool feature that the new auth component has is that you can chain your handlers. For instance, you can have a database handler for authentication, and a Twitter handler, and a Facebook handler, and it will go through the three handlers until one matches for a pair of username and password. Uh, this is class loading. Class That's loading. what you're after. Yeah. Uh, we have took the PSRO. Recommendation from the PHP standards group. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I, I, I want to just add like this basically is like your, uh, the function that loads your classes, so you don't need to do like include or include like a require once or whatever in your code. Uh, when you start like do like instantiate a class to like to do a like, new my class blah blah blah, it will try to find it and uh, it will try to find it based on certain naming conventions. So PSR. PSR0 is uh, the naming convention that uh, includes uh, also the conventions for like PHP 5.3, so you can use your namespaces and stuff like that. It's actually a link that is uh, worth reading about. Okay, as we don't support PHP, well, we do support PHP 5.3 at the moment, but we don't use the features in it, like, like namespaces. Uh, we don't actually have a way to to load files guessing the namespace. But we have provided a good migration path to 5.3, and this is the new function app uses. In the past, you would use app import. It, uh, the parameters were like app import component of. Now you will use the full class name and in what name pa namespace or package it's located. For instance, app uses auth component in what package? Controller component. So you will, you will have to declare app uses my class 
at the beginning of your file, and you can use this anywhere, anywhere you like, and it will automatically instantiate your class for you. Uh, I mean, find the class and require the file. Uh, I'm going to quit this and show the code. Can I? You need to find the code. Uh, it's right here in GitHub. Oh. I'm going to, f to show you the code so you have a clear idea of how conventions change to provide support for PSR0. And I will just show you how the new cake core looks like. We have a top namespace cake, and we have some packages like cache, configure, console, controller, etc. cetera. Uh, would you, any of you tell me what's the convention for creating controllers or naming controller files? Yeah, the controller name in plural, underscore controller.php. But not anymore. You will just name it after the class name. So you would have app controller, pages controller. Pages controller maps to the class pages controller. So you will just copy the class name into the file name, and that's it. It's more, more natural. And this is the function I told you about, app uses. App uses the full class name in the namespace controller. And it will automatically find the class for you. So you, you actually have to like explicitly declare which classes you're using? Yeah. Uh, in the future, you will just find and replace this and use the use keyword. <coughs> And that's it. Okay. You will have to do it anywhere. Can you just, uh, for instance, uh, declare uh, like just the namespaces they're using? And because you know, like your class name uh, uh, corresponds one to one to like the file name. So, like, is it possible to declare just the namespaces that you're using or packages that you're using, or you like need to actually? Uh, it's not built in, but it will be fairly easy to do. Yes, just. Uh, Override the, the default handler for loading classes, okay. and yeah, it would be fairly easy to yes. So you have you have like a loader handler that you can override. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, whoops. Was that the final slide? No. This is yours. Uh, okay. Huge change, and it's going to change the way you develop forever. We have ASCII debugging for consoles where we used to dump out HTML. Not such a big change, I know. Um, full details about all the changes and uh, migration plans, plans we still have that we're debating, uh, everything about 2.0 and the roadmap is on cakephp.lighthouseapp.com. So if you're after information and you're wondering how you migra migrate your apps or what's changed, uh, it has all the information, uh, including what we've talked about and beyond. Uh, some of the other things we're doing, and this is part of it, is getting out to the community, talking to people, seeing what they think about it, uh, taking that feedback in, and then thinking about how we develop the core and what we do in terms of features and functionality. So very much going out and getting feedback from people. Um, so can I have KPHP 2.0? Before we go into whether or not it's ready, I'll discuss the release cycle very quickly. <clears throat> we go through a number of steps, and they're fairly, uh, they mostly go in order. Uh, so a dev release is followed up by an alpha release, and these releases aren't feature locked. Again, the beta release, it's before we're essentially feature locked, uh, but it's moving closer to a stable release. Following that, we enter into a, a release candidate cycle, and we have three or four of these, and they're, they're closely together, you know, a couple of weeks, we try and get those out um, just to get bugs out. No feature changes are, are done in that release cycle. And then we hit stable after that. Uh, there can be patches following that if necessary. Uh, at the moment, we have released a dev release, uh, so that's available for you to get. If you do want to have a look at it, though, I suggest you grab the 2.0 branch itself. 
Uh, there's been a lot of uh, fixes and changes since the dev and the 2.0 branch is um, it's actually uh, stable enough to run something prototype-ish on. Uh, I wouldn't put it on your production site just yet because things can change. Uh, we're actually using 